Rob Coleman, talk about being the computer geek's ultimate idol <laughs> with the Star Wars universe. Well, you know, I, I don't really think of myself as a computer geek, but I guess when you come to an event like this, I, I guess I am, you know. <laughs> uh, it really, it's like a dream come true. You know, I was 13 when the first movie came out, and it, I really have to sort of take myself back sometimes when I realize what I've been able to accomplish at ILM. And really, you, you are a pioneer in the, in, the, in, the, in the computer effects world of trying to advance the way that films are made and using Star Wars as a tool to achieve that. Is innovation a creature of default or is it something that you intend to do when you start out to make a movie like Attack of the Clones? I think it's the, I think it's the former. I think it comes as part of the process. As part of the artistic process, we have to achieve imagery that that really when we begin we can't do. You know, we sit around and we sort of say, oh, no, how are we going to do this? You know, how are we going to create a, a digital Wookiee? Or how do we make Yoda's skin look realistic? And then a lot of geniuses sit around and, and figure it out. And a lot of it's done in software and computers nowadays. So, you, does, does Star Wars kind of lose an allure for you because you know you, you, you know the guy behind Oz? I mean, is it sort of the, you know all the tricks and so it's The man behind the curtain? The man behind the curtain. Well, yeah. I guess I'm one of many men or, and women behind the curtain. What it does is, I, I can't look at the movies really, you know, I, uh, and, and, and enjoy it as an audience member because all I see are the things that I want to fix. So it'll take me about an, another year. It takes about a year, and then I finish the movie, or you know, after I finish the movie, and then I can actually sit back and just enjoy it. Animation supervisor and biggest critic of yourself. Well, I think you know, if you if you are able to excel in this business, it's part of the personality. You know, we're always learning. Hopefully, we're always getting better. And so, as part of the, my process, I kind of look back even sort of two months ago and think, oh, if I'd just done that, I could have made it better. But you move forward. Now, be honest in answering this, because I've seen a lot of the behind-the-scenes the documentaries about Star Wars, and is it intimidating to work with George, not because of his status, but because he is such a perfectionist, and you really need to get what he's looking for. And do you worry every time you go into a meeting that, oh, I hope George likes it, or? No, you know, it, it, it's actually not the perfectionist part of him that uh, that that gets you know gets the tension going. It's it's wanting to do a really great job for him, wanting to bring his imagination because he has such an incredible, vivid imagination. It's sort of saying, you know, can I do it? Am I good enough to do it? But he's a great guy to work with. I love working with him. I have to admit, when I started on on Phantom Menace. I was freaked out. I, you know, I had insomnia. I put on way too much weight. I lost too much hair. But now, I'm okay. How'd you get the gig at ILM? Uh, as it turned out, I was working in Toronto, I'm Canadian, and uh, without knowing it, I was actually doing some really state-of-the-art computer animation. And I got hired at ILM in '93 when they were doing Jurassic. Sent my reel down after I saw Jurassic Park, and, I, and they said, "Come and join us." And it was like amazing. What, talk about, let's talk about Revenge of the Sith now. It's the final installment in the Star Wars saga, and is it everything that you wanted this film to be, or you thought it would be? It's even better than what I thought it was going to be. You know, being on the inner, inside, we get to see the script, and we, you know, get all excited about that, and then I start seeing the shooting, and the action, and the fighting between Hayden and Ewan, and the, and the real on-screen chemistry that those two men have, it was be it's turned out better than I could have, could have hoped for. And what do you hope fans or just general people watching the film take away from their Star Wars experience after watching this movie? Well, I hope that they get swept away. I mean, I hope they get swept away for two hours to this amazing world that George Lucas has created, and I hope that they I hope they love the imagery that we've created, the special effects and animation, and I, and I hope they just they think it's the, the movie that they've been waiting for. Great battle scenes, great lightsaber duels. Um, the other movies have been panned by the critics, but this one seems to be the critics' darling this summer. And is that something that you guys, even though it's not your goal, is it something that you're all happy with? Well, you know, we're human beings. We want people to like our work, you know, so we're very pleased to start seeing the, the initial responses to the film. I'm very excited, and I can't wait to see this movie with a real audience, you know, with, with a paying audience that's just excited to see it. And that'll be tonight. That'll be tonight. What's next for you? I mean, everybody's hopeful that the Star Wars live-action television series will, will take off. Will you have some involvement in that? I'm actually going to be working with George on the animated television series, and then he's talking to me about doing an animated feature together, so we're going to work on that later. But you also will work on other films, uh, being with ILM. Are there mm -hmm. other, other movies that you're working on currently? Uh, not right now. No, when I'm working with George, it's exclusive uh, just to Star Wars. But first, I'm going to take a holiday, take a break. <laughs> Which you deserve. Yeah. Rob Coleman, thanks a lot for talking to oh, us. It's a pleasure. And take care. Have fun tonight. Thank you very much. Okay.